I'm back to this. This wonderful work of art. I'm here to finish this off because I'm like halfway through the book. Um, I can't, I can't even remember where we left off. It's kind of hard to explain where we left off. Um, people were basically just describing the wonderful art of farming in the colonial times. I could use a bit more light in this room. Well, that didn't work, and it also made the dogs go into a fit. Hold on a second. Ah. That is a lot better. Okay, so, without further ado, I'm going to read this. So we left off on chapter... Five. The Physiology of Farting There was an old doctor called Bart, Bart Simpson, who encouraged his patients to fart. He said the relief was usually brief, but terribly good for the heart. That it is. <sighs> farting is a subject very close to the hearts of many doctors although some of them have trouble coming to terms with the term itself. No so the oriental doctor who gave a European visitor the charming and presumably accurate diagnosis, you have too much farty up and not enough farty down. Hello, welcome to stream. Um, too much farty up, not enough farty down. What is that supposed to mean? You have too much gas stored in you, and you're not letting it out enough? Eh, who knows? It, for goodness sake, this is a book called The History of Farting We're Reading. It can mean anything. The terminology of flatulence was given some attention several years ago in the learned journal Verbatim. An, artic an editorial article stated Dr. R. J. L. Waugh has drawn the attention of readers to the lack of any single word in the English language other than fart or the pat fart for the passage of rectal flatus. I should probably turn my ringer down in case it like goes off and it vibrates violently in your guys' ears. Anyway, most of the bodily functions can be described by words suited to polite society of physiological terminology. For example, eructate, masticate, sternitate, micturate, defectate, copulate. Dictionary, please. But there's no corresponding word for fart, which remains taboo with a large portion of the population. In my lecture to the Listerian Society in this hospital on April 30th, 1974, wow, this is recent, I proposed that the act of passing rectal flatus should be termed deflatulate in its verbal form when a single word was needed in circumstances unsuited to a monosyllabic alternative. There is no need to say deflatulate would get short shrift from the limerick writers, but there are plenty clever enough to sing about farts without actually mentioning the word. That's true, as we've seen in um, the last episode. If you didn't see the last episode, I cannot put a link there, so just go on my channel and scroll down. I made it a very, very recently. I did the stream where I read the first half of Wow. Speaking of gas, I got burps. Burps for days! And yards, apparently. <laughs> oh, another poem. An unfortunate girl named Louise lets a vast ventral blast with each sneeze. She attracts quite a crowd when they rip out real loud 
and she blushes right down to her knees. Impressive. And another picture. It says, Gertie's blown the sides out of her nightie again. Oh. I don't know if I can show this picture, though. I mean, it might not it might not make sense at first glance, but it's just I didn't get it at first, but it's it's kind of OK, sure. Um, She ripped her dress. You could see her leg showing. She ripped her leg. Her She ripped her nightgown. When she farted and she's just standing there like, oh, Ooh, man, I can't stop yawning. And my hair is a freaking mess. I need to get it cut again. There's been a lot of guff written about what causes farting. But an interesting fact is that a fair percentage of farts occur because we talk too much. Explain. It's wind in the system, you see. And a fair bit of it is swallowed while we are eating. And the more we talk as we eat, the more air we are likely to swallow. Okay. A fair bit of this is released by belching, but the rest usually passes on down through the small intestine into the colon. The plot thickens. Can that actually happen? I mean, if you talk and you breathe while you're talking like I am doing now, whenever you breathe in, you breathe in air. But he's just saying that, like, when you eat, you kind of breathe in, too, so you help digest it and swallow it. Anyway, colonic gas is about 50 to 60 percent nitrogen and 30 to 40 percent carbon dioxide. Tired? I'm not tired. I just keep yawning. All right. Um, that kind of got chopped off by a yawn, but colonic gas is about 50 to 60 percent nitrogen and 30 to 40 percent carbon dioxide. The remaining 5 to 10 percent is where the venom lies because it is made up of hydrogen sulfide, better known as rotten egg gas, methane, the stuff that makes coal mines explode from time to time, and hydrogen, one of the most inflammable of the glasses. Of the glasses. Phew, what a mixture. And all sitting there in the bottom part of your gastrointestinal system, waiting for a chance to burst upon an unsuspecting world. You, you know what? I think that's actually right. I think there actually is, like... Hmm. Not that, the part where the woman whipped it down. Ugh. Um. I don't know. You mean this? I think she was just, like, going out for a, I don't know, it doesn't say nightgown, it just says nighty, so I'm assuming it means nightgown. I have hair in my mouth. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. Anyway, I think it is, I think that is true that uh, 50 to 60 percent of farts are nitrogen and 30 to 40 are carbon dioxide. Like, think about it. Ooh. What do we breathe out? Carbon dioxide, right? So that gets stored in the lungs. As we take in oxygen, the lungs well, they kinda they kinda trade it. They trade the oxygen for the carbon dioxide. It's just like, hey, uh lung over here says we got carbon dioxide in the wonderful trees of the planet that provide the oxygen, say, hey, we got some oxygen for you. We don't want it. Do you want it? And we're like, heck yeah. We don't need this carbon dioxide. Do you want it? Heck yeah. So we just make a nice little trade deal, and everyone gets along. Uh -huh, you had your own hair in your mouth. I don't know if it was my hair or not. Might have been fuzz or whatever. Hey. Hold on a sec. What? Come here. One minute.
I will. Okay, sorry about that. My stepdad had to ask me a rather ridiculous... Yeah, what Chris O'Sell just said. That's my mom. My mom, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, my, uh... Rather ridiculous question. Does anyone out there know what tin pants are? Not tin pan or tin can, but tin pants. Are they pants made out of tin? Hmm, that's weird. Anyway, next page. I kind of lost my train of thought. <sighs> Man, I can't stop yawning. Alright. Sometimes it does so with tragic results. In 1980, in a hospital in Denmark... What was that? Um, in a hospital in Denmark, gastrointestinal surgeons were operating on a male patient when things went wrong in a big way. An electrical surgical knife, much favored by modern surgeons because they cauterize small blood vessels as they go, ignited a pocket of intestinal gases. This set off an explosion which rippled its way through the poor fellow's digestive organs, and despite the best efforts of the surgeons to repair the damage, the patient died. Is that true? Quick, someone do some research about it. Type into Google, like, um, 1980 Denmark patient dies from a fart in surgery. Or something like that. Someone do that. Um, colonic gas is normally expelled by the act of flatulation. The Encyclopedia Britannica informs us. Movement of gas in the digestive tract produces gurgling sounds known as borborygmus. What they really mean is that your tummy gives a great rumble and you fart. Simple as that. It reminds us of the young man from a particular American university. More poems. There was a young man from Penn State who could fart at a terrible rate. Shout out to Penn State. Rips, rattles, and growls came forth from his bowels. He maintained it was something he ate. A peculiar young Scot named Mick Dougal, the lights to break wind in a bugle. Otherwise, he is sane, comes out of the rain, is hardworking, kindly, and frugal. So he farts in a trumpet? Or a bugle? Huh. Peculiar. Quite peculiar. In fact, all the scientific stuff about bacterial action... <sighs> also means that what you eat also affects the way you fart. Highly spiced and very cold foods, for instance, pass more quickly through the system, and your digestive rate can also be affected if you become emotionally upset. Anger farts. And although the small intestine digests and observes, observes, absorbs most kinds of food, Beans, nuts, and grains are converted by bacteria into other products. That was a weird sentence, the way I was punctuated. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, and although the small intestine digests and absorbs most kinds of food, beans, nuts, and grains are converted by bacteria into other products, and hydrogen is given off in the process. This is getting very, um, scientific. Beans, in other words, make you fart. Heinz means farts is a famous graffito, and the campfire scene in Hollywood's Blazing Saddles is another brilliant testament to the flatulatory power of beans. Beer and other fizzy drinks make you fart. Whipped desserts contain tiny air bubbles. 
and they also eventually emerge as farts. You just never know, do you? That actually makes sense. Because the more air you put into your body, the more air comes out. Hmm. I gotta make a note of that. It reminds us of the best definition we have heard of Cuisine Nouvelle. Okay. Two blue-vested workers were having a quiet beer at the pub. I'm gonna do two different, like, voices for this. Me wife's funny, said one. It was her birthday, and she said she wanted to go to one of them fancy frog restaurants. So we dressed up, and off we went. Yeah, said his mate. What was it like? Bloody expensive. Though the grub wasn't too bad. But the portions were so small, if you went outside and had a good fart, you were hungry again. That's how you... Digest? But it's an ill wind, as they say, that blows no one some good. How did London, for example, rid itself of the worst of its body houses? Another poem. The poems are the funniest ones. A flatulent cockney named Billy could fart like a two-year-old filly. He did it so well that he soon blew to heck every brothel in old Piccadilly. Or brothel. One happened on September 26, 2008. Someone died from a fart? Wait, really? Or is that talking about something else? Chapter 6, The A to Z of Farting. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's an alphabet of farts. Yes. So, okay. So, you mean to tell me someone actually passed away from a fart in surgery on September 26, 2008? Now I've seen everything. I always joke around and say, oh, yeah, you know, farts are lethal. Like, they smell and you just, eh. But dang, someone really died from farting. Wow. Okay. A to Z of farting. A detailed and intimate examination of the art of flatulence for those people think a fart is just a fart. There's more to a fart, people. Go look it up yourself. I will after this stream. A stands for the absolute rip snorter. I'm dead serious. That's what it says. That is that is what it says. A stands for the absolute rip snorter. Wow. This is a man's world kind of fart. The Dawn Buster. The volley of cannon before the blood-surging ride into the valley of death. The rat-tat-tat of the regimental drum. Regimental drum, rather. There's more than a hint of devil-may-care about the rip-snorter and a whiff of gunpowder, too. An up-and-atom lad's reverberation issued by certain majors before they all go over the top now more usually heard over pool tables and city bars, or among victorious spectators at football matches. Oh, there's more for A. Did it, wait. Whoa. 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 That's the whole rest of this book is just an alphabet of farts. All right, buckle up, guys. The awkward fart. It's a dictionary of farts. It's not an alphabet. Unplanned, exertion-based farts have embarrassed us all. Getting out of chairs, sitting down on lawns, picking up ladies' purses, squeaky trousers on leather chairs... Getting an extra yard at Lord's or reaching for the smash at Wimbledon. What are those? 
maneuvering gingerly into the dentist chair, hauling luggage out of overhead jumbo jet lockers, curtsying to the queen. So it's an unintentional one, and it just makes things super awkward. Like, hey, hi, nice to meet you. Oops. The artistic fart. Sometimes heard at the ballet, as the chap in the very tight trousers hoists the girl in the frilly skirt onto his shoulder. Was it her or him? Was it the floorboard? More pugnacious at gallery openings, particularly after the cheap bubbly in the cold sausage rolls have started to have an effect. All art is life, and life is art. And we know what rhymes with art. Ha <laughs> ha! B. The bathtub fart. This is one of the very best of all farts, except, perhaps, when saving water by bathing with a friend. It is a three-dimensional fart, which is quite rare. Not only can you hear it and, well, smell it, you can actually see it, which can be quite exciting. Tiny bubbles, sometimes at others, of Vesuvius-like rumble, followed by a tidal wave which washes the rubber ducky right out of the bath. <laughs> we now know what will happen if the president farted. The world ends. Who knows? It becomes a meme. That's what happens. We know that Archimedes was a bath farter. Remember his cry of, Eureka! When he sat in his bath in ancient grace. Oh, wow. Ancient Greece, one day, he had discovered the principle of flotation, of course, and it all came back to him when he shifted onto his left buttock and dropped a splendid bubbling fart. Or so the story goes. Shower farts are not as successful as bathtub farts, but occasionally you can get good resonance from a loosely fitted shower screen, and farting in spas isn't much fun be isn't much fun because the bubbly effect is lost. But for a truly spectacular underwater eruption, nothing beats a visit to the zoo after the hippopotamus has finished his lunch of cabbage stalks. See also Z as in zoo farts. Ooh. Okay. Sure. Burning farts. How lovely. Um, is it sometimes practiced by schoolboys in the dressing room of the cricket pavilion while waiting for the rain to stop, particularly if breakfast has been baked? Has wait, what? <sighs> Sometimes practiced by schoolboys in the dressing room of the cricket pavilion while waiting for the rain to stop, particularly if breakfast has been baked beans on toast. Breakfast? Baked beans on toast? Ew. The idea is for the twelfth man or someone to bend over while the skipper lights a match, and then all to take notice whether the fart burns blue or yellow. If it burns red, the whole team is in trouble, and the pavilion at serious risk of losing its roof. If you are keen on experimenting with burning farts, it's a good idea to have someone standing by with a bucket of water. Safe fart burning should be practiced at all times. Ah, I thought it was going to be like, you fart, and it burns you in, you know, the trunk. Um, not you take a match and you make a flamethrower out of passing gas. Let's not do that. Yeah, let's, let's not, okay? You gotta be insane enough to do that. And here on this good Minecraft Christian server, we do not do that. I screwed that all up. These can be, oh, C, the car fart. Uh, 
These can be needlessly unpleasant, particularly if you're a... <laughs> what about M? M is for mouth fart. When you say a word weird and it comes out terrible and you just fart to add comedic relief to it. Because you suck at talking. Anyway, these can be needlessly unpleasant, particularly if you are a passenger in the back seat on a foggy night after a supper of beer and Cornish pasties. Ew. Modern technology has come to the rescue of the back seat farter. However, in the shape of the electric window went the window 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 winder, which allows a much more surreptitious release of a flavium that was most that was impossible with the old mechanical ones. In other words, better to get a relief out of it with an electric motor uh, window you roll down than when you have to crank. One driver we know who farted a lot would say, jovially, I think we've hit a Van Dyke. The church fart. That's just unholy. You have heard the old saying, as popular as a fart in church. You probably remember Confucius saying, Man who farts in church is sitting in his own pew. Ew. Both are self-explanatory, as is the, Did an angel speak fart? Which seems to be the associated, which retired clergymen, to insist on sitting in the front row, although they've obviously heard it all before. The curry fart. Oh, there's a fart ah, dedicated entirely to Stephen Curry. That's great. Comedy gold. We shouldn't have to mention how dangerous this particular effusion is particularly in India. It takes on even more dangerous connotations if you are in India and you are not Indian. Holiday makers partaking of curry should avoid farting at all times because dry cleaning is expensive, even when it exists, and those laundry wallas on the banks of the Hooghly beat heck out of white chap's trousers. Oh. How's your new dog doing? Good. Tinks is doing good. Um, if you don't know who Tinks is, uh, Tinks is my new dog that lives with my dad. Um, I'm gonna have to do a video about her. She's just the sweetest little thing, you know. Um, n next time I'm with my dad, I'll have to, like, take a picture or record her running around or whatever so I can show you guys. She's adorable. She's so cute. Yeah. Yawning. <laughs> this is a real... Speaking of dogs... <laughs> oh, God, man. This one's so relatable. D stands for the dog did it fart. <laughs> Okay, we all know dogs fart, particularly when they're in front of the fire. It's natural enough. They're usually there after their evening meal, and the warmth of the fire gets the digestive system bubbling along. Dogs are too nice to get much pleasure out of farting in front of the fire, but they get a bit upset when they're then kicked outside into the rain and cold, particularly when they haven't done it, particularly when it's that beer-filled lout on the couch watching television who says, It was a dog! Real dog farts can be fairly foul, believe me. But so is the behavior of those who blame their own farting on man's best friend. Please try to be nicer. Dogs are people too, you know. Quote of the year. Quote of the year. From Dr. Benjamin Bart's The History of Farting. Dogs are people too, you know. Society for Dog People. Join the Rebellion. And now we have another uh, illustration. 
between a dad and his son. Dad, don't blame the bloody dog, Dave. Dave, no, Dad. That's Dave. That's Dad. And that's Dog. Bork. The Duna Lifter Fart. In Northern Europe, this is better known as the Duvet Lifter, or in China as the Quilt Lifter. <sighs> Good. Whatever the geography, cause and effect is the same. Too many Brussels sprouts with the quiche, quiche Lorraine, too much Mao Tai with the chicken and black bean, and at around about 3 a.m., Woomba! Sometimes the Duna slash Duvet slash Quilt lands on the floor, which is unsatisfactory, particularly in winter. On the other hand, dunas slash duvets slash quilts have strong muffling qualities, which means you can often get away with a good post-midnight fart with hardly any consequences at all. It is a reminder also of the old saying that the honeymoon is over when your partner farts in bed. E stands for the egg sandwich fart. Eggs and farts have a great deal in common. When an egg goes rotten, it creates hydrogen sulfide, which is known, reasonably enough, as rotten egg gas. When we digest certain food, the funny things going in our stomachs also, at times, produce hydrogen and disulfide. If dogs are people, then are people dogs? I never thought of it that way, but now you mention it. Maybe. Maybe. When we, when we digest certain food, the funny things going on in our stomachs also at times produce hydrogen disulfide. The so-called egg sandwich fart is therefore one of the worst possible. In fact, they can be vile. In some women, the premenstrual variety is more like an emission of nerve gas. But that is a sexist remark. It should be struck from the record. Heck yeah! The elephant fart. Oh, God. For all round timbrae. Timbrae? Timbrae. For all round timbrae, complexity and sheer exuberance, simply the best. Scientists tell us that because of their eating habits and plumbing arrangements, elephants can manufacture several thousand liters of farting gas per day. Thank God they rarely eat broccoli. And thank God they're too big to be kept indoors. Yeah, really. The exclamation fart. We have mentioned that Martin Luther punctuated his sermons with ripping farts. It's certainly a good way to make a point. The good exclamation fart calls for perfect timing, however, and should not be undertaken by amateurs or without plenty of practice. Otherwise, you would just be fluffing your lines. Exclamation farts can also be useful if you are in the audience and the speaker is either boring you to tears or building up to a point with which you violently disagree. A good loud fart is a good attention grabber, although, of course, timing is, again, of vital importance. Okay. Said to... Oh, F stands for the fairy fart. Said to be the softest and sweetest of farts, the faintest rustle of thistledown on a summer's day, the flutter of gossamer wings, the merest honeyed whisper. It reminds us of Cecil and Cedric watching the hefty brewery worker unloading his truck. His truck. Truck. What's a truck? Unloading his truck. As he dumps a great keg to the ground, he lets rip with a crackling fart, and Cecil says to Cedric, Oh, Cedric, a virgin. 
and we have this picture of an old man. It's it says, I kid you not. Actually, I'll read it. I'll read it as I show you so we can both react to it at the same time. Old man sniffing. I love her free what? I love her free, fine, careless rapture. I can't read in a mirror or anything. And the and the screen is blurry. Why is the screen so blurry? Oh god, it zoomed in. I didn't think it could zoom in. Uh next page. Yeah. The firecracker fart. This is quite a celebratory fart, particularly noticeable during Chinese New Year when things are exploding everywhere, presumably to keep away evil spirits. The firecracker fart is thus redolent of gunpowder, chili crabs, 1,000-year-old broco eggs, stir-fried broccoli, and crinkly cabbage. You sometimes get the feeling we will be better off with the evil spirits. Yeah, really. You fart that bad, you might as well. We made it to page 100, guys! And the last page is page 160. We made it! We're more than halfway there, folks. Oh, we're more than halfway there. Man. Hey, Meatball. Hey, what's up? Um... It kind of stinks, too. No pun intended. kind of stinks, too, because once this book is done, it's like, I'd have read it all, and there, it's... Yeah, I read it all, and I can't share this wonderful work of art with you guys. Anyway, so if we smell a flower, is that the fairy fart we smell instead of a sweet smell? I don't know. It's me, your Uncle John. Yeah, I know. What's up? How's it going? Um... The French fart. There's another... I guess there's another uh, poem. There was an old row of char chartress who had to stoop over to fart. What? This is worded weird. There's an old row of charter who had to stoop over to fart. He oft bust his britches, which put folks in stitches but proved most inspiring to starter. Or starter. A lot of E's at the ends of words. G. The German fart. The growl of panzers in the western desert, the deep throaty thrum of the beer halls, the wump of sauerkraut and pickled pork, the whine of an over-revving BMW, the scream of exploding lederhosen, and the plump... Ja! Of a dairy-fed frolin. Healthy, happy, noisy. Did you know that the German word for start is fart? Seriously. F-A-H-R-T. Who knew? The more you know. Greenhouse effect fart. Scientists say the Earth is warming up, and this could have disastrous effects because the Arctic and Antarctic ice caps would defrost and there would be more than water on the kitchen floor. They reckon things are hotting up because cattle and sheep fart too much. Do you believe that? Imagine the Martians looking down in a few million years and saying, There goes Earth, farted to death by those silly-looking sheep. In fact, the CSIRO has done a lot of work on animal farts and reckons that methane produced by cattle and sheep provides only one-third of the 5.3 million to 12 million tons of gases released from Australia into the atmosphere each year. So there, take that to the bank. H, the habitual farter. Every office has one, wears tweed hacking jackets to better facilitate his habit, and eats hard-boiled eggs. Baked beans, sauerkraut, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, pizza with sausage. Hey, don't you talk smack about 
uh, pizza with sausage. Pizza with sausage is amazing. Okay? Oh, uh, there's more to it. Pizza with sausage, onion, and anchovy. That'll do it. All washed down with diet beer. Diet beer. Wants and deserves a room of his own. Ew! So he eats all that, lets one rip, and he has a room to his own, so he's just stuck in there, smelling that all day? Ugh. Gross. Alright, next one. The horse fart. Horses fart with a fine, fair, careless rapture, which puts most humans to shame. Wow. Good show, jumpers, hunters, and hardlers are particularly good farters, and that's why. This reminds us of the story of the queen riding in her open landau with one of the African presidents when one of her famous greys let out an enormous fart. Oh, I do beg your pardon, said the queen. That's all right, ma'am, said the president. I thought it was one of the horses. Horse farts are nothing compared to bullpug farts. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Bullpug farts are... Wow. There's something. The hangover fart. It is fashionable in some circles to show compassion to those not as well off as ourselves. Not in this case. The hangover farter deserves all the opprobrium he gets, particularly if he's been out all night on Steak Diane and Red Ned. Foul beast. To be avoided at all costs. CF? CF habitual farter and other antisocial types. Okay, whatever that means. I stands for the Icelandic fart. There's an old saying in Iceland. Everyone likes the smell of his own fart. The Iceland fart, therefore, is something of an introspective fart, usually drops so deeply within the distant reaches of a fur coat that only the owner ever gets to appreciate it. Hence the saying, this is strictly a northern hemisphere fart, and fairly rare at that. Hmm. Who knew? The Indian farter. The Indian farter could not be compared with the Indian giver. Not to be confused with farting in India. See below. I'll get to that soon. Somewhat two-faced. Slightly dishonest. None of this look you in the eye and fart stuff. Underhand. Almost gratuitous. Needs telling that a fart's a fart for all that. And that below, they referenced to a, a couple seconds ago, not to be confused with the above. Farting in India. See also C as in curry fart. I, the immaculate fart. This is a peculiarly, peculiarly, yeah. This is a peculiarly Christian, or more correctly, Catholic manifestation of the flattest art. There has been no food, no drink, no indigestion, no discomfort of the internal drain pipe system, yet you fart. This is truly a miraculous fart, and not often encountered in these wayward times. More's the pity. So it's when you don't eat and you fart anyway. As we did discuss earlier... Farting is caused by air intake. So if you breathe, you can fart. The, in the incense fart. Oh, brother. Spontaneous flatulence. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, this used to be quite common in such places as Greenwich Village by Cedar Bay where flower people congregated to smoke funny cigarettes. Less common these days, but still noticeable in shops selling bronze gongs and cheese clo cheese mm, ch cheese cloth nighties. Just a whiff of something exotic in the air, which has you thinking. Sandalwood? Cardamom? Rose oil? Greenhouse tomatoes? Or old socks. 
J stands for the J-curve fart. Rare and specialized, this somewhat histrionic, histrionic fart is encountered only in the hollowed halls of federal treasury, particularly during recession. What's with this particularly obsession in this whole book? Not to be confused with the G-spot fart, which is equally rare and crops up only in obscure sex surveys. In fact, we're not entirely convinced either of them exists. Only time will tell. Old socks. Yeah. When you fart and someone questions what the scent is, like, is it incest? Incense? I almost mispronounced that word. Is it incense or is it this? And also, I just have a hole in my sock. That's great. Speaking of socks. The jubilant fart. This is also known as the celebratory fart. It's the pop of a good bottle of bubbly at the moment of triumph. As a world record pole vaulter clears the bar, the weightlifter completes the snatch and jerk. The 30-meter putt drops into the hole. The man of your dreams gets down on his knees and finally proposes. It's VE Day in the grand final all wrapped up into one long reverberating burp of triumph and success. That was a terrible impersonation of a fart. Let's let's rewind that. You didn't see that. It's the VE Day in the grand final of all wrapped Oh, it's v, it's VE Day in the grand final of all wrapped up into one long reverberating <laughs> of triumph and success. A gold medal, cordon bleu, noli scandis, kind of fart that lives in the memory long after the whiff has gone. The most noble of farts. The junk fart, like on the last day of school. Yes. Exactly like the last day of school. You get out of there and you're like, Oh, right, victory fart. <laughs> okay, the junk fart. Once known as the fish and chip fart, the pie and pasty with sauce fart, or the jellied eel fart. Jellied eel. It now erupts upon us in many modern guises. It's the steam dimmy fart, the tapas bar fart, the takeaway Vietnamese fart, the save loy and batter on a stick fart, the curry puff fart, and the McDonald's fart. Highly processed and brightly packaged, it is a destroyer of heritage fart not to be taken lightly. You notice them scattered everywhere after football games, and they could well be the contributing cause of ozone layer depletion now being widely blamed on sheep and cow farts. Is there no justice? They say sheep and cow farts are the ones ruining our economy, but really it is us. We need to change as a race. We need to stop farting. Justin O'Shell, 2020 for president. K stands for the kamikaze fart. Kamikaze means divine wind. But there's nothing particularly divine about the result of a kamikaze fart. The farter has a crazed look in his eye and he carries on farting regardless. Also known as the suicide fart or killer fart, this is a bad number. It should be immediately reported to the authorities. It is reason enough for a reinstatement of gas mask drill. No one is safe from the kamikaze farter, not even himself. I, I love this page. I absolutely Adore this page. Okay? This page is a blessing. Because it's it's just it's just amazing. It describes a wonderful form of passing gas as a kamikaze. Where the person knows they're farting and wants to rub it in everybody's faces and says, smell it! Wonderful. And to that, I give a subtle golf clap. On to the next one. The, 
the kookaburra fart. Only found in Australia, the kookaburra fart invariably makes people laugh. It starts out going, ah, 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 then moves smoothly into ooh, 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 and concludes with a wonderfully long and evocative, sometimes with a touch of echo, ah, 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 ah. If your farts sound like that, then I am very concerned. Also, what was that you just said? What if you are a senior in high school and your last day is in early June? Do you fart on that day or do you wait? Wait until you're out the building. You know, like if you're out of the building, it's the last time you're stepping out of that building. Maybe you'll go back in. Maybe you might come back out. Um... Yeah, but once you get out of that building, let it rip. Just let it rip. I don't mean to quote Beyblade or that absolutely, God forbid, awful song from that um, that movie, Let It Go. But do that. Let it go. Let it rip. You sound like a monkey. Yeah, the Kugabara fart is basically a monkey fart. Anyway, early settlers were somewhat co-founded by the kookaburra fart with its overtones of eucalyptus and dead snakes, but it is now recognized as authentically Australian, and even the National Parks and Wildlife Service is getting in on the act. Save the kookaburra fart posters are now available from your local wildlife service headquarters, so give them a call. Give, give them a call. Go out, chain yourself to a tree, and just chant relentlessly, Save the kookaburra fart. We shall not let this perish from the earth. Not. Do not. No. Do not let this kind of fart cease to exist. Vote for me, 2020. Oh, God. The Kraft Ebling... The, the, oh. Rewind. The Kraft Ebbing Fart. Not to be confused with the Kraft Cheese Fart, Professor Kraft Ebbing was a Freudian psychiatrist who believed farting was a manifestation of mother love with lumps in it. See also L as in the lumpy fart. Ooh, I can't wait to read that. That's next, actually, I think. Uh, I love Beyblade, so cannot turn to see Beyblade Durst Turbo on December 15th a.m. They're still making shows on that? Huh, I thought the season kind of, like, died out and people that were doing Beyblades just kind of, like, stopped. It is nostalgic, though. Um, although often proved wrong, he persisted with this preposterous view, even to the extent of wearing nappies to bed at the age of 53. See also S, as in silly old fart. Even Freud, and to a lesser extent Jung, knew that a fart is 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 a fart. It's a fart. Is a fart. And now, we have another picture. The Rolling Passion, it's titled. Johnny, he says, as the car bumps him. By Hove, I think she farted. And it shows this wonderful little old lady farting the door off of the freaking car. And people go flying. No, it will never die out, and it will be on Disney XD. All right. I mean, I don't really watch TV a whole lot, so I kind of flick through the channels or whatever. But there we go. Beyblade is still in the run, along with Pokemon and that. And now we're on to L, where Lumby Fart is supposed to be. And I will be right back. Um... Sorry if this takes forever, but I'm going to go get a drink.
So I will return momentarily. All right. My leg is also falling asleep. So I got to stand up, walk around a little bit and rejuvenate. I will be back. This is not the end. All right, I am back. I drank a nice glass of root beer, and now my throat is rehydrated and ready to roll on with this mayhem of a book. Also, I need to blow my nose, too. So, another moment. <sighs> Well, all right. Don't forget Yu-Gi-Oh. The next Yu-Gi-Oh series will be called Yu-Gi-Oh Varens. And I'll be on Nicktoons. Yu-Gi-Oh's still going on, too. Hmm. I seriously thought, like, a lot of uh, the old kid shows have kind of, like, died off. And they're only in reruns now. Especially Spongebob, like... SpongeBob, I'd say probably seasons one to eight were good. Um, but after that, it just got weird. Um, Adventure Time ended. That's not really nostalgic, but still, I that was a great show. That ended. Regular show ended. If anyone knows what those are, man. 
Those shows were awesome. Ugh. Now I got the hiccups. And the burps. L stands for the lackadaisical fart. Fairly inexcusable, really, because a fart should denote some kind of deliberate input and output. The don't care attitude of the lackadaisical farter doesn't get anybody anywhere and could bring the whole business into disrepute. It is a kind of lounge potato, snuffle fart, and all wind and no substance, rather given to airs and graces, unenthusiastic, listless, and feebly sentimental. If you find that you are slipping into lackadaisical farting mood, get a grip on yourself and try a little harder. Faint fart never won fair lady. Yeah. The licorice fart. You know, a lot of people talk smack about licorice. I was just like, oh, it's disgusting. And blah, 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 blah. Licorice really isn't that half bad. Like, take, Twiz- Twi- take Twizzlers, for example. That's all it is. It's cherry licorice. So if you like Twizzlers, you like licorice. Case closed. Anyway, the licorice fart. Slightly French particularly when detected around boulevard bars when old men sit pasties before noon, redolent of aniseed and antipath, antipathy, antipathy. Here, where people chew loathsome straps of black licorice as an apparent, the licorice fart is altogether more aggressive and care should be taken. It was Plato who com- it was Plato who commended a little licorice for thou bowels sake. And he wasn't kidding. Ah The Life Be in It Fart. One of the few real farts given government sponsorship. Fart good, feel good. Is a motto now sweeping the country. No, it isn't. Uh, don't be a lounge lizard. Get out and participate. That's the message. Farting is a people pastime and better enjoyed in the great outdoors. Why fart in the sitting room when you can fart in a 5,000 square kilometer? Why fart in the sitting room when you can fart in a 5,000 square kilometer national park? Think big. I get the feeling this book was written somewhere Other than America, because America does not use kilometers. We use miles. So, yeah, this book is foreign. I'm doing a very terrible, stereotypical American accent. The Yu-Gi-Oh! series that is on now is called Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc V, and that is on Nicktoons, Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Cool. All right, we have another poem. Woo! More poetry. And now we're on M. M stands for the match. Ow, I got something in my eye. Nature itself does not want me to finish this book. It's an it's a freaking eyelash. You know what's funny? Eyelashes. They're, they exist to help you keep stuff out of your eye. Meanwhile, they're the only freaking thing that gets in your eye. Ironic. There was an old lady from Kent who farted wherever she went. She went to the fair and dropped a few there, so they plugged up her butt with cement. Problem solved. The modest fart, also known as the silent fart, the silent night, the breezer, and various other names, usually requires usually requires some muscular control particularly when one is in company. 5 not v is V, the numeral for 5. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do a game, all right? Take a shot of Coke, Coca-Cola, every time they say particularly. We're probably up to... 20 now? 
Its antithesis is the manly fart or the muscular fart. Both of them much more forthcoming. Right next to it, the musical fart. By definition, the musical fart is restricted to the upper register of the tonic sulfa. And it is not as rare as you might expect it. It often has to do with constriction of the buttocks, such as applied by cushions and deep leather couches, so that the passage of wind is not unlike that through the, the reed of a soprano saxophone. Often, of course, the effect is lost because there never seems to be a tape recorder around when you need one. True. So true. Oh, we have a long one here. We're on N. N, as in the Namby Pamby fart. Insipidly good because I have a two little bottle of Coke right next to me. Take 20 shots. That's about a chug. I don't know. Insipidly, insipidly pretty, weakly sentimental, lacking vigor. Not unlike the lackadaisical fart, but even less important in the scale of things. More a fluff than a fart. So it's just like that. I did. Good. The Neanderthal, the Ana the there or oh. the ne the why am I having such a hard time pronouncing this word? The Neanderthal fart. Finally, this one comes particularly. No, not no nope, false shot. This one comes practically from prehistory and is now only heard in the dressing rooms of aging rock and roll stars. Although rugby league scrimmages also sometimes echo in its primitive beat. In caveman days, of course, the Neanderthal fart was more of a means of communication and identification with an expression of gaseous relief, giving rise to the old concept of a fart in the dark. Caves were very much identified by smell because there wasn't much street lighting in the catacombs, and family members had to learn to recognize their parental pong. Our word father, of course, comes from the Neanderthal farter, not to be confused with the Neapolitan fart, which comes from eating too much ice cream. Uh, the nonagenarian fart. Nonagenarian fart. Fairly rare, because you have to be in your 90s to enjoy it. An extrapolation of the adage that life begins at 40, and essentially a celebration of the agelessness of mankind. A fart is a fart whether you are 9 or 99. You need to be in school where kids will ask you why are you having trouble talking. If, yeah. Um, at 99, however... You have probably got more time to sit around and enjoy it. It is one of the reasons why old men, A, look so inscrutable, and B, tend to smoke smelly pipes. We have another picture. Boy. Oh, mummy, have farts got lumps in them? Mom. No, dear, of course not. Let that sink in. Boy asks if farts have lumps in them, and the mother says, No, of course not. And the look on this kid's face is just beautiful. He's just like, oh crap. I really messed up. Oh. is for the ostrich fart. What you do is bury your head in the sand. And when you are satisfied, no one is looking, you fart. This has also been referred to as the only obeying orders fart. Or the... I didn't know the gun was loaded, fart. It's rather like going into space with three other astronauts without telling them you have been on a diet of chili beans for three years. Ooh, that's bad. It's a cowardly fart, in many ways, but we're here to talk about farting, not to be moralistic. It raises an interesting question, nevertheless. Do ostriches fart? That's a good point. Do ostriches fart? Google!
Anyway, the outrageous fart. These usually come in pairs. Being caught out dropping the first fart, you have blown in the plot, so there's no real reason to not drop a second. Hence, it could also be called the opera box fart, the honeymoon fart, the first date fart, or the job interview fart. It is a, it's really a to heck with the lot of you fart, and you have to put up with the consequences. So it's just like, screw the world! And then you're like, I shouldn't have done that, I regret. Hey, remember one viewer, hey, you are talking about, um, presidential, the president fart. It's in the book. We get to find that out. P stands for the ping pong fart. The ping pong fart is essentially an audio fart, coming as a progression of hollow sounding, almost onomatopoeic pings and pongs, like a ping pong ball bouncing across the table and finally falling to the floor. It's therefore a multitonal fart, which makes it fairly rare and sought after by specialists in the field. Fart specialists? It is thought to have been discovered in China by President Nixon, no mean farter himself. See the presidential fart, which is right next to it. The presidential fart, one of great honor. Peter the Great, Peter the Great of all the Russians is said to have been a prodigious farter. But modern leaders of the American persuasion have also developed reputations as flattest fiends. We have just mentioned Richard Nixon and his alleged discovery of the ping pong fart. Lyndon Johnson was an enthusiastic farter, although he frequently blamed eruptions of his Texas chili beans on either his horse or his dog. But Gerald Ford was perhaps the best of the lot. The Washington Press Gallery used to joke about the president's lack of coordination Particularly late at night. Take a shot of coke. It said particularly. And the popular saying was that General Ford couldn't whistle and chew gum at the same time. This was in fact a sanitized version. The real line was General Ford can't fart and chew gum at the same time. I mean, how hard is that? How hard is it to fart and chew gum? Like if you if you can walk and chew gum, you can fart and chew gum. What are you trying to say, book? Q stands for the quack quack fart. First noted by Donald Witzel in the fart book, Ivory Tower, 1983, the quack quack fart is a silly name for a fart. A lot of people will call it the duck fart, but it is too important to remember that this is a double noted fart. And while quack quack is the sound of a duck makes, and while quack quack is the sound a duck makes, in the sound of the quack quack fart, there is nothing to stop a duck from going quack just once, not twice. So that, so, ooh, so that is why it is called the quack quack fart. Just to be exact, fairly rare. Uh, the quadraphonic fart. This is perhaps the greatest of all audio farts, and because it calls for a good deal of cooperative effort. It could also be called the team fart or the family fart. It is best performed in a worn weatherboard attic about 3 meters by 3 meters and after a splendid meal of curry, beans, cauliflower, and ice cold beer. Team slash family members sit facing the corners of the attic and the team, sla team leader slash patriarch slash matriarch shouts all together now and away you go. The rumbling of the beans plus the reverberation of the weatherboards can make dog barks clear into the next suburb. There's a comment here. If you ask Google to do if you ask Google do ostriches fart, Google will say do seagulls fart. I took another shot of Coke. Good. Because I get the feeling we're coming up on another particularly. The quintessential fart. It's a fancy name for a fart. Uh, fart. We, we have a definition within a definition within another definition. Fart. 
Small explosion between the legs. By the school dictionary. Fart. An anal emission of intestinal gases, especially when audible. From the Webster Comprehensive Dictionary. Fart. Emit from anus. Full about or around. Two. Emission of wind from anus. Compatible person. From the Oxford Concise Dictionary. We're all in this together. I don't know the rest of the song. I just know the chorus. Fart. Wax as in wax skis. From the Collins Pocket French English Dictionary. Fart. Pet. Collins Pocket English French Dictionary. Fart. Doris hat, which is a rhyming slang. I don't get what a quintessential fart is. It just gave me a bunch of different definitions, but okay. Probably a joke that went over my head, but... <laughs> So, three definitions of fart. Um, actually, one, two, three, four, five. Quintessential. Five definition, f Five definitions in quintessential probably refers to something in five. Oh. Stratus Dictionary. Welcome, dude. I'm reading the rest of this. We're in the ABCs of farting, and we're on letter R. R, the rip snorter. That just sounds vile. Whew. Also known as the real fart. No hanky-panky here. No backsliding. No blaming the dog. A rip. The rip snorter is a look you in the eye and fart fart. Crisp, melodious, and inevitably maladurous. It bears sting, but no ill will. And although in evidence at the football and the races, and sometimes on the golf course, it is essentially a good pub fart. The problem is that one rip snorter tends to beget another rip snorter, and if you happen to be in a big school, the chances are that you will soon have to find another bar. If the barman complains about too much rip snorting, remind him in straightforward terms of the ancient adage. Beer makes me fart. I had no idea there was more to this. Oh, there's plenty more to this, buddy boo. There's a whole alphabet, a whole dictionary of fart. Oh, God, we have another insane word. The Rosicrucian fart. Dogs are going insane again. This is not, repeat not, Another name for the excruciating fart. The excruciating fart should probably have a listing all of its own. The excruciating fart, by definition, is the first fart after an operation to fix your, fix your hemorrhoids. Ooh. That has to hurt. That really has to hurt. Um... The Rosicrucian fart, by contrast, is almost a cult in origin. A ghostly kind of fart, not unlike the dreaming fart, which in itself is much different from the dreamtime fart, although the magical connotations are not entirely dissimilar. Dissimilar. In his interpretation of dreams, Freud referred, referred to the dreamtime fart as having its origins in your mother eating too much cabbage. As far as we know, he didn't say anything about the Rosicrucian fart, which may or may not be significant. I'm slowly beginning to lose my speaking abilities. The Royal Fart. The story goes that Edward de Vere, 17th Earl of Oxford, knelt in front of Queen Elizabeth the I, and let rip with a huge fart. He was so embarrassed that he exiled himself from court for years. When he felt brave enough to return, he was spotted by the good queen who said, Come forward, sir. We have forgiven you the fart. Such a forgiving queen for a fart. S. The Salmon Rushdie Fart. Incredibly well-crafted, literate, interesting, recognized as a work of art in some parts of the world, but horribly dangerous in others. 
Like sport and politics, farting and religion shouldn't be allowed to mix, but living as we do in a global village, it is as well to know when you're about to drop a salmon rusty fart and when you are not. Despite its obvious qualities, it should be its. Despite its obvious qualities, it is a fart not to be undertaken lightly. It's rare. And now we have the silly old fart. In the same family of intractables as silly old buggers, fools not saying that word, also not saying that word, etc., etc. They seem to pervade the upper echelons of the church and the public service for some reason, which may have something to so... <laughs> wow. For some reason, which, um... Man, I, I need to, like, focus on something else. I'm like, wow. I'm losing myself in the music. In the moment, I own it. I better never let it go. I only got one shot. I'm not let this chance blow. This opportunity comes once in my lifetime. Whew. I need to, like, clear my mind. Hold on a second. Wow. All right. I took a moment to reflect. I should be able to talk properly now. They seem to pervade the upper echelons of the church and the public service for some reason. Eminem reference. Yes, it is. Bonus points to you, good sir. But every board and committee has one, and shire councils have been known to have two or even more. The silly fart is way the silly old fart is wayward as well as flatulent and often becomes lost on the way home. Common and growing ever more obvious, the Somerset fart. <laughs> All right. Oh, it continues. Oh, wait, no. The Somerset fart is a different thing. This is quite a pleasant fart. This is the definition of the Somerset fart. This is quite a pleasant fart, although not when it has pips in it. It hails from Somerset, or Zomerset in local Argot, the home of real cider, where thick-eared yokels have an old saying while on their way to inebriation from too much scrumpy. Or Loki Zyda, cause Zyda lead the virgin, and virgin needs the merriment. Sorry for anyone that has a, uh, Somerset accent. Uh, I probably butchered that. Another picture! Woo! Farmer Hayok, as Chauffeur drives under motor. And yet they say the city blokes don't fart. Look at this wonderful picture. <laughs> T, the taco fart. Ah, we could probably all relate to this from eating the Taco Bell. Dang. In recent years, this has joined the ranks of the fast food farts, adding color and not a little zing. In Mexico, the taco fart is an early warning manifestation of Montezuma's revenge, and as such, is like the curry fart, uh, in that it is not to be taken lightly. In fact, once Montezuma's revenge has struck it, it has struck it is. Whew. In fact, once Montezuma's revenge has struck it is unwise to undertake any kind of farting un at all unless you have a spinkter like Captain Marvel. Hey, Captain Marvel! R.I.P. Stan Lee, good man. This is a good ethnic fart. Nevertheless, and should not be confused with the tacky fart, which is undertones of unacceptable taste and style. The Tasmanian fart. There are some of these which could come under the silly old category, but the original Tasmanian fart is steeped in history. Abel Tasman, for example, 
used to boast he could fill a top sale after eating a keg of pickled herring. And if you search the diary, di, di, if you search, ah, Abel Tasman, for example, used to boast he could fill a top sale after eating a keg of pickled herring. If you search the diaries of early explorers closely, you will find several references to the peculiar farting habits of the Tasmanian tiger and the Tasmanian devil. Looney Tunes? No, it's not a Looney Tunes reference. A Tasmanian devil is an actual animal. These days, however, the exclusive source of the authentic Tasmanian fart is the mutton bird, a foul creature hunted at times of the year when no other food is available in those blighted climes in which is laugh laughingly referred to there as a delicacy. The mutton bird fart is laden with malice and more than a little cholesterol and should be avoided wherever possible. Oh, I got the itches. The fart of the SARS. Ivan, I'm not pronouncing that name because I cannot do that, was better known as Ivan the Terrible because when he farted, all of Russia trembled. And although his descendant, I'm not saying that word either because that's weird, was called Peter the Great, he was a terrible farter too. What made SARS fart? Well, they lived pretty high on the hog's back. And Peter, in particular, loved getting drunk and getting his guests drunk, too. They were fond of vodka and beer. When a bit kidly were known to roar, which means roughly, cabbage soup and kasha, which is a kind of porridge, is our fare. It is, is it any wonder they farted? All right, now we're on to you. So we have U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. We only have six letters left. When I fart, all of California trembled, literally and figuratively. Wow. Why aren't you in this book? You, the ubiquitous fart, also known as the fart that walks. The ubiquitous fart is simply everywhere, particularly in airport waiting rooms, department store cafeterias, and underground railway stations. It varies from summer to winter, but not much. Overwhelmingly, it is a blend of onions, old socks, and under-irrigated irrig armpits, and at times is mistaken, particularly in Paris, for condition ill humanity. It is nothing of the sort. It's a stale old fart, and particularly, take a shot of Coke! Uh, reprehensible when blended with the dying fumes of Balkan cigars. The unmentionable fart. This mean little critter is invariably dropped in polite company. No one says, Cor, who's herping her purse? Or, crikey, has someone just died? No one blames the cat or dog. No one comments on the squeaky floor. And although cheeks sometimes blush red, and the hostess tries surreptitiously to open a window, no one has the gumption to say, Who farted? The unmentionable fart is the bane of society, and likely to remain so until a healthier attitude it taken towards the entirely natural operation of our gastrointestinal tracts. The upwardly mobile fart. Oh, man. Also known as the yuppie fart, or the yuff for short, increasingly encountered among the tracksuit and BMW brigade, and sometimes around backgammon tables, the yuff is usually a low-calorie kind of fart. Oh, the yuff is usually a, a low kind. Low. I need a moment.
Okay. I think what I'm going to do is turn the camera that way. There we go. Because this is much comfortable. Anyway. The yuff is usually a low-calorie kind of fart, low in cholesterol and soluble fats, and is known in other parts of the world as the health food or even the pritikin fart. It's fairly nondescript, but a fart, nevertheless, and deserves a place in any modern compendium. Come on, dogs. Oh. Um, I don't know if I should skip this one. It's a bit, uh, you know, this one is a bit risque. Did you move? Yeah, I just rotated the camera. What is going on behind me? Anyone else hear that? I heard like a crinkling noise. Is it the bag? Who is this bag? Okay. I'm going to take a pillow and kneel on it. Uh, also, Catherine, they said, um, they said particularly like three different times. So you got to take three more shots of Coke. Yeah, I'm going to skip this one because it's a bit too risque for this uh, Christian Minecraft server channel. But anyway, the value-added fart. We're on V right now. Not dissimilar to the J-curve fart, the value-added fart is also encountered in the quieter reaches of Treasury, in the boardrooms of some of our larger mining companies, and even among the GERs, gurus of the Australian wool board. It's not so much making something out of nothing, such as reversing the social order by claiming that you and not the dog had farted, but of seeing the possibilities of a quite ordinary fart and then processing it into something which could even be sold overseas. The possibilities are endless and should be given very great thought at the highest possible levels. Who knows? The recession could even have a fart-led recovery. The Volkswagen fart. Oh, it's a car fart again. Farting in cars is bad news at the best of times, but farting in a Volkswagen is unsociable in the extreme. The Volkswagen fart is therefore one of the worst of the genre and is to be discouraged because Volkswagens are tiny. If you let one rip in there, it lingers. And it just stays. We have been preaching the simple right of all, which is to fart when and where you feel like it. But farting in the back seat of a V-dub simply isn't fair. Thank you, and I took those three Coke shots already. There you go. Um, na -na 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 -na. A great deal of research had to be undertaken in some pretty unpleasant places just to find out whether whales really farted or not, and the jury is still out on one or two particular species. The consensus... Oh, this is the whale fart, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. The consensus, however, is that blue whales fart and sperm whales fart. And although no one got close enough to establish the fact beyond reasonable doubt. Um, it is probable that killer whale farts too. It is probable that killer whales fart too. Wow. I had a brain fart for a minute there. I'm like, wait. During their research, however, our intrepid investigative, di investigative divers noticed bubbles coming out of the rear of a Russian nuclear submarine. So in later volumes of this work, we may be able to expand on the nuclear submarine fart. Do it! Make a part two to this glorious work of art and put that in there. 
wonder what they're going to do for X. The xylophone fart where you're farting is just like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. The whisper fart. Shh. Because this is the whisper fart, I'm going to say this one softly. This is one of the genre of undercover farts requiring good muscular control and more than a little spite. You can whisper fart your way through all kinds of situations, but eventually you'll be caught out. It's more devious than the silent night fart, which often as not is an unconscious act, and it could even signal a serious personality disorder. The dedicated whisper farter should really have seen it too, but probably won't. And now we go back to regular one as we go to the winery fart. See chapter two. Port makes me fart. Otherwise, the know-it-all visitor to the cellar door who insists on the winemaker opening his best Cabernet Sauvignon, then leaving with not so much as a bottle of blackberry nip. He is second only to the hydrogen sulfide fart, which is banned these days and all but most of the primitive wineries. We should be on X. Nope. Yep. Yeah, we are. X stands for the Xanthic fart. Ooh. Rare, but perhaps the worst fart of all. Xanthic acid is yellowish and deeply evil, and its effects on metals such as sodium are revolting. The xanthic fart makes the rotten egg fart smell like channel number five. One whiff of this little mover can leave you doubled over the kitchen sink for hours. It is probably an ingredient of nerve gas, which means the zan <laughs> which means the xanthic farter could well be banned by the Geneva Convention. Rightfully so. Anyone detecting a xanthic fart should immediately contact the Environment Protection Agency in your nearest city. If you are well enough, that is. The Xmas fart. I see how you did that. Any fart dropped at Christmas. It's a pretty productive time of year for farting. What with one thing and another. And some good variations on the theme lay scholarly works on this happiest of Christian festivals. Far the herald angel singing la 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 is a historic carol, and one presumably placed on the flatulent ferocity of good King Wenceslas. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Every time he makes Christmas pudding and pork. And how do you think fat old Father Christmas gets back up all those chimneys so quickly? Too early for Christmas. Well, it's the middle of November, and we have a whole month and a half until Christmas. Who cares? Who cares? They have stuff for Christmas in Walmart already. They completely looked over Thanksgiving. It's time to move on, people. Anyway. Uh... I don't think I should read this one either. This one's a bit risque as well. It's a business strategy. Exactly. Um, I'm going to read this one personally so I can decide for myself if I should show you guys it. But the name of it is just. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to read this one. This one is risque. It's a bit uh inappropriate. But we do have another picture. This one's called... Smith's Weekly, 1929. Tragedy of the Flapper in the Backfire. So this lady comes up to crank a car to get the motor starting. And she farts, and, it, and she just goes crazy. I keep moving the bed forward, dang it. Go back. Go back. Ow. 
Are you there? Okay, good. We're almost done. We have three farts left. Why? The yachtsman fart. Not dissimilar to the rip snorter, the yachtsman's fart is crisp and decisive. Like someone ripping a sheet of 30-ounce canvas. It is the result, usually, of too much beer and red beans. Prairie strawberries, the American cowboys used to call them. Or in the old days, salt cabbage and rum. And correspondingly pungent. Keep up, women. The yoga fart. You spoke like Enda for a second. Enda? Who's Enda? Um. The yoga fart. The generally unpublicized cause of spontaneous levitation. The yoga feasts from the Incredibles. Enda mode. Oh! The little short lady with the black hair. Okay. The generally unpublicized cause of spontaneous levitation. The yoga feasts for many days on lentils and forswears any relief until the mystical, magical moment when flatulence takes over and he, cross-legged and concentrating like crazy, rises into the air like a harrier jump jet. Action and reaction, as Newton observed, are equal and opposite. And here, we have the bum acting as a launching pad. Most people believe demonstrations of levitation are faked, but they probably don't appreciate the inner power that the simple lentil can generate. Farts are powerful. They have a lot of force behind them. Yeah, I'm going to regret that. We're on the last one, guys. We're on the last page. The zoo fart. Letter Z. All zoos are really a collective fart. And it is and isn't any wonder. Imagine it. Elephants, hippopotamuses, rhinoceroses, buffaloes, lions, tigers, three-toed sloths, bandicoots, crocodiles, and red bum monkeys all locked in together, eating and farting to their heart's content. Cognoscenti take blindfolded tours these days to guess which particular cage they are standing in front of. Like wine judges, they sniff and pout, then deliver their judgment. Debate still rages on whether or not birds fart. Do not disrespect Star Wars like that. Like what? How did I disrespect Star Wars? Other thing about... Oh, the Force joke. Hey, I'm a Star Wars girl. <laughs> I'm a Star Wars geek. I can make fun of it, okay? I have permission. I have a license. But anyway, that's the end of the book, guys. Woo! I should probably pick that up. That probably wrinkled a million pages. We did it, guys. We finished this book. Ah, I have definitely been educated on the art of farting. And it's history, and it's background, and it's many definitions and forms, and whatever. Um, I don't, I don't know what to do now. I mean, I was a really good book, if I do say so myself. Like, very educational. Hope I hope you guys learned a thing or two. And you know what? I recently found. My bean boozled beans. So I think as a commemoration of finishing this book, I will do a bean. Here we go. I'm going to do one bean. I have not picked this thing up in, I, I dare I say, months. So it probably smells terrible. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Anyway, I'm going to do a bean. Uh, say goodbye and end the stream because we have made it through this book. 
I'm actually kind of sad to admit that it's done now. I mean, I really like doing that. Oh, well. And this being... In commemorance of stinky old sock smelling farts, we have Tutti Frutti or Stinky Sock Bean. I'm actually going to say it's worth it. Um, if it's stinky socks, because then it'll taste like a fart. Are there any fart beans in here? What's the closest one to a fart? Uh, rotten egg. I'm going to look for a rotten egg one. Although I hate them. Is this rotten egg? Uh, nope, that's spoiled milk. Or coconut. might take a while. Yeah, do that, Bean. Get the dog food or chocolate pudding. I don't think I have any more dog food or chocolate pudding. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna do this. Take the lid off. Oh, that is vile. That smells terrible. Um. Yeah, I don't have any dog food or chocolate pudding ones. Woohoo! What what ones do I have? I have like a a little bit of them. Like that's all the ones I have left. See? Ah, crap. Um. It's. I think it's this one. That's the rotten egg or buttered popcorn one. Do them all. Absolutely not. I am not doing the rest of these. Or am I doing them all at once because I will legitimately throw up and get sick and die. Because that's what happened last time I took a whole handful of them. I threw up. And it was disgusting. Please, no. Maybe when I hit a billion subscribers, I'll get a whole package and eat them all at once. Fine. Yeah. Rotten egg, buttered popcorn, and commemorance for farts. Where is my trash can? I have a regular can. I'm going to just rip this little tab off. Alright. Rotten egg or butter popcorn for the sake of finishing the farting book. Here we go. Rotten egg. Ah. Uh. Uh. Worth it. Worth it. Eh. Remember when we did this for school popcorn? Yeah, you got all the good ones. Oh, that's terrible. It just lingers. But when you know it, you know it. Wow. Ah. Wow, that was bad. Anyway, um, we finished the book, did a bean, and that's the end of this stream. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to go get sick now. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, let me know what should I, I should do for my next live stream. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, if you like the stream, make sure you... Whoop, I screwed up my outro. Do not die. I will try not to. But thank you guys so much for watching this stream. If you liked it, subscribe.
drop a comment. It's Mizzity's smash that like button. And I'll see you guys in the next video.